What's going on guys? So today we're going to do a little bit of reviewing on a wireless DMX option that we uh, recently started using. Um, the Donner wireless DMX system we found uh, on Amazon actually and uh, we were always kind of hesitant for wireless DMX in the first place because wireless DMX is there's a lot of room for failure there. Uh, DMX is kind of kind of touchy anyway and uh, so when we decided to try out some wireless DMX options we did a lot of research first um, did some testing and uh, I'm gonna try to share with you today a little bit of what we found and uh, what we decided on and what we're what we're using so let's let's dig in all right so sitting here on the desk we have the Donner wireless DMX system uh, this system consists of uh, five wireless receivers and then one transmitter um, these receivers are completely wireless in the fact that these contain a battery inside them. Um, it is a lithium ion battery, just a single cell. Um, one of the worries that we had with wireless DMX in general was going to be longevity. You know, can I connect these up at a wedding uh, when I'm testing all the lighting out and then leave them turned on and connected and will they work throughout my entire gig? Um, According to the manufacturer on these, these do have an 8 hour battery life um, when they're fully charged. Uh, I have experienced close to 8 hours of using these before, um, so I don't believe that is an exaggeration of these. Um, typically we try to be conservative with them when it comes to battery life. We'll kick them on and then uh, test everything out and then we'll, turn, we'll just turn the receivers back off um, until we're ready to actually start the gig itself. Um, typically most weddings are around four to five hours, so these last more than long enough uh, for that. So to get into some of the details of the receiver itself, uh, these are the receivers obviously right here. Um, they have a, uh, a metal case body. I don't know if this is stainless or what this is. It's chrome plated. Uh, it is nice. A plastic end cap. Underneath this plastic end cap is a LED, a multicolor LED, which will tell us uh, status uh, of the system as we're using it. Um, Along the sides here, we have the charging port right here, which is where our charging cables will plug into. Um, this smaller hole here next to it is the, uh, the, the, uh, the button that changes the wireless channel on this. We'll show you that here in a minute. And then the last hole is the on-off switch button back here. And sorry, one more hole. This one here is the uh, LED indicator for charging on this side. Uh, this end here is a standard XLR works with your standard 3-pin XLR DMX systems. And that's it, it's tiny, not too much to it. Now, the same company does make the non-battery powered versions of this. They are a good bit smaller. Um, they're a good bit smaller and they're, less, they're not as big around, but those do require that they are plugged in. Now, a lot of our light fixtures have the, uh, the power outlet on them as well, if you're not chaining uh, to a bunch of other fixtures. Um, so if you aren't chaining the power on the fixture, you can plug the charger into it and uh, plug the charger in as it's running. These can be plugged in to the charger when they're being used. Um, so we've done that a couple times and the, it works just fine. Um, this has been a couple times we forgot to charge them. And uh, so in that case, it, uh, it comes in pretty handy if you can just plug it in uh, to the fixture. Or, I mean, if you have a power strip handy, close you can plug it into that as well it won't hurt anything at all the transmitter is this right here this is a little bit longer than these uh, units here uh, some of that is because it is a, uh, a male XLR on the end there um, the transmitter does have to be plugged in the transmitter itself does not have a battery inside it uh, so you do have to plug the transmitter in now typically your transmitter is going to be wherever your uh, your DMX console is, um, so it's usually not too much of an issue to uh, to plug this in. Um, but yeah, this has your male XLR on this end, antenna on this end. It is movable; you can spin it around. Um, it has a power socket right here, and then it's got two other spots here. It's got the LED that shows the status whether or not it's transmitting whether or not it's receiving DMX and what channel it's on. And then the small hole here is the button to change the channel. Uh, I don't know how many channels these have. I'll have to look it up. I believe it's seven channels. Um, and they are color-coded. So this is a, a RGB LED in here and 
in the end caps here as well. And uh, the RGB, whatever color it is, as long as the colors match when they're not, they don't have any DMX going to them, uh, that means they're on the same channel. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. But yeah, as for form factor, they're small, they're light. Um, even with the batteries in them, they're not that big. Um, they're not that heavy either. Easily transportable. I got this little plastic, it's actually an old microphone case uh, that I use to uh, to hold them all in. Uh, I keep the, the power uh, cable for the transmitter in there as well. And I keep, I usually keep around two of the chargers for these as well. Um, just in case one of them's dead for whatever reason, uh, if I left it on accidentally or something like that, um, I keep a charger with me. Uh, or if for whatever reason I need to run them more than eight hours, uh, I have that in there as well. So here is the power cord for the transmitter. It's a standard wall wart. This is a five volt output. It's five volt, one amp. Uh, standard wall plug on this side and then the very tiny plug on this end. Uh, I've got a cable tie on this one to keep it together, but this just plugs in right here into the side. And that's all there is to it. It kind of ties up pretty nicely with the unit itself. One of the bummers about this is if you have multiple outputs, DMX outputs on a console, say you have three of them that are kind of close together, the way this is oriented, so here's your top notch here, this is on the side. So if you have one that's really close to beside it here, this could get in the way. Now, I mean, most of us, probably people that are watching this channel, aren't dealing with multi-universe setups here, so or at least multi-output. Uh, you could always just put a little pigtail, an XLR pigtail on this to get it away from the console if you needed to. It's not an issue for me, because uh, typically this just plugs into my uh, my ArtNet node, and the, they're spaced pretty wide on my ArtNet node. The receivers, the power supply looks almost exactly the same. Uh, it's the same specs, 5 volt, 1 amp. Now they did color code them differently in my kit that I got. Uh, I will put a link in the description for where you can buy these, this exact kit. Um, and like, be cautious if you go out and look for these yourself because you can find the ones that are not battery powered. And uh, that will be uh, kind of upsetting to receive those thinking they're fully wireless um, and just needing battery when they don't actually have the batteries in them. So as for a little demonstration, uh, we'll turn this one on here. Uh, I do keep a small screwdriver in the kit with me as well because these buttons, you can get to them with a pen, but it's not, you can't just get to it with your finger. You have to have something to poke in there to, uh, to turn them on. So I turned this one on. I'm not sure how well the camera can see this, um, but you can see this is kind of lit up red here. And I'll go ahead and change this channel so that it lights up a different color here. There is green. Uh, let's go to, well, let's see what's next. There's blue, purple, there's light blue. That's kind of easy to see. Um, probably see it a little bit there. You compare it, it's lit up light blue. Um, so as you can see, this is completely self-contained. As it's light blue right there, um, that means it is, uh, it, that's just the channel selection. This also means it's not receiving any DMX currently from a transmitter. Now, I'll power up this uh, transmitter here as well and uh, we'll take a look at it and uh, compare the colors. All right, so I have the power cord hooked up here. We'll go ahead and plug this in. And as you see, this lit up red. If you remember when I first turned these receivers on, I was on the red channel, so I'll go ahead and change this. Um, since I don't have any DMX running into this, this color that's indicated here is the color of the channel. So I'm going to adjust this. We'll hit the button here. It'll cycle through our colors. There's blue, purple, light blue. Okay, so now these two, this transmitter and receiver, are on the same channel. Um, this means once I apply DMX to this, uh, this will start sending DMX to this. And some things will happen. When I plug DMX into this, this will start blinking red, meaning it is transmitting DMX. And then these, all of the receivers, will start blinking light green. Um, just the light green in blinking means it is receiving DMX from a transmitter, and they are ready to go. Um, all of these can be done at the same time. And obviously, you have one transmitter and five receivers. This is all going to be the same universe. I'm not going to be... Uh, you know, transmitting anything different to any 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 of them separately, they're all going to be receiving the same DMX signal. Um, so one of the great parts about that is I can just set up one transmitter and then I don't have to worry about chaining uh, a bunch of DMX through a bunch of fixtures. So I have four fixtures up there. I don't have to run a cable to one fixture, loop through, run a cable to another one, loop through, run a cable to another one, 
and so forth like that. All I have to do is plug these in and all of them have DMX. So these are originating DMX voltage wise on them. So once I plug this into a fixture, I can still chain out of that fixture to say two or three fixtures beside it. Um, so you don't have to worry about losing signal because you're, you're using multiples of these. It's, they all originate the DMX signal themselves. So I'm gonna grab a DMX box real quick and we're gonna plug this transmitter in and we're gonna see how this looks here. Okay, so here we have a, an old American DJ RGBW4C. This is an old four channel uh, DMX controller. I used this to control some uh, uplighting and some PARs and stuff like that. But uh, for the sake of the demonstration, it'll work just fine because it does have a DMX output. So go ahead and turn my DMX box on. I'm just going to put these other receivers just out of the way here. Um, and then, so this, uh, this box is on. Uh, I am outputting DMX on it. I'll just turn it on to some sort of color macro here. It doesn't really matter. As long as it has a DMX signal present, this will detect it. So we'll plug our transmitter in, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna try to make this visible, see a couple things happen here. So our receiver here is light blue still, and our transmitter is light blue. So as I plug the transmitter in, I bet this is gonna be upside down. Yeah, let me turn my uh, box right set up here, upside down here. Okay. So now, as I plug this in, you will see this light turn to blinking red, and then you will see the receiver start blinking green, meaning it is receiving DMX. So let's plug this in here. All right, so now my transmitter is blinking red. That's telling me that this is receiving DMX from the box, and then it is transmitting. And as you notice here, my receiver, if you can see, colors get a little misbalanced here with the white balance on this camera. Now it is blinking green. This means it is receiving DMX. So I could plug this unit into a uh, fixture and it would uh, be receiving the DMX that it's uh, that this transmitter is receiving. So there we have it. This is uh, the Donner wireless DMX system. It is pretty simple. There's not much to it. Uh, transmitter, a bunch of receivers. These receivers are battery powered. Uh, the range on these is great. Uh, I've never really ran into an issue with them before uh, regarding range. Typically, I'm just doing these in a uh, in a ballroom or something like that. And for the most part, my fixtures are, are usually pretty close to my transmitting area. Uh, they claim somewhere along the lines of like 300 meters, 1,000 feet, something like that. Um, I've never obviously tried them that far. I'm sure they would probably work that far. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, line aside of course and I imagine it could get a little bit worse because these are 2.4 gigahertz I imagine it could get a little bit worse if you have a bunch of Wi-Fi networks around and, and things like that but I've never had an issue with these uh, syncing up and uh, and working range wise uh, but overall I mean they work great uh, I'd recommend them I mean it is kind of scary getting into wireless DMX in the first place because I mean there's a lot of unknowns here but as long as you have these charged up um, I've really not ran into any issues with them yet. We've used them for probably about a year and a half, two years now, uh, using them every other weekend or so, and they have performed flawlessly every time we've needed them. A couple times I've forgotten to charge them, but that's my own fault. That's not a fault of its own. Uh, and with an eight-hour battery life, I mean, if you do two four-hour gigs, I mean, uh, you still have plenty of... That, that's enough to get you through uh, two four-hour gigs for the most part. Um, you know, typically... If I'm worried about battery life for whatever reason, I'll turn these off uh, during cocktail hour or something like that. And then when time comes, I just reach up, hit the button on it real quick, turn it on, turn it off. Um, I can even just uh, keep them unplugged from the fixtures. And then when I get ready, just turn them on real quick, go plug it in, I'm done. We're ready to rock and roll with some DMX. So other than that, I mean, leave some comments down below if you guys have any questions about these uh, I can cover them a little bit more I've got some other wireless DMX units I might uh, I might cover as well but these are our primary ones that we use and uh, again check the link in the description for the Amazon link so you can go buy these uh, the kit the kits are expandable you can buy just a receiver um, so this kit here I mean as long as they are the same model um, you can add as many receivers as you want I don't think there's a limit on how many receivers you can have because they're just receiving the signal this is this is outputting um, so a friend of mine bought the kit of five receivers here, and then he bought three more, just individuals. And uh, they all work great. And they even work with my uh, my kit as well. So if he needs to, a couple more receivers, he can just 
come borrow a couple of mine and uh, they all work together great. So if you have any questions, like I said, be sure to leave them below. Also be sure and like and subscribe. Uh, you can always use your, use your support. And uh, we'll be doing a bunch more reviews as we go down the line. Uh, we've got a bunch of equipment we, we want to review. Uh, some, some different stuff, uh, things that not everybody might have. Um, I, I couldn't find a bunch of reviews on these uh, wireless units on YouTube, so that's why we're putting this one up. But uh, we got a bunch more coming. So like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you know anybody who's interested in wireless DMX, shoot them a link to this video. Uh, hopefully it could uh, provide some use for it. So other than that, appreciate it. We'll see you next time.